Welcome back everybody to another video right here at the complete free flutter course. Uh, if you can hear my fan from my laptop going completely crazy, that's because we're still rendering the video from the lint yeah from the lint video that we just uh, we just recorded. So yeah my fan's gonna be a bit busy. But that's gonna end in um, yeah about six minutes. So while we're recording this. Okay, so what are we talking about today? We're going to carry on with our block. And I mentioned that uh, while I was coding the block in the previous videos, I wasn't doing it the way I would normally do it in my own projects. And the reason for this is because normally I used a package called Freezed, which helps me with some things. <laughs> Sorry, I can't be more specific. Um, it creates uh, data unions or freeze unions, which give us a few different advantages. For example, it automatically creates a copy with uh, function, copy with, we could make it ourselves, it's not terribly complicated. Uh, all that does is it takes an object and copies that object with all of the old values, but we can override only one or two values. And what do I mean by that? Um, and to open something where there's actually logic. Let's take my block, for example, and we're not going to, you know, we're going to delete this afterwards. This is just an example. Um, if I had, I don't even, <laughs> can't think of an example. Uh, if I had a, to actually make a new class, uh, class car, for example, and this could have final uh, int top speed, and I could also have final uh, int the uh, final string color. If I had a copy with function, which I do not, but I could make one, uh, we could say, um, first we need to make a default constructor. Okay, it doesn't want to let me. I'm making a lot of mistakes today. Uh, first we need to generate the constructor. And then we could have a, a car, and this gave me another error because this should be capital. I made the wrong thing capital. This is why we installed the lint thing in the previous video, so now we can see when we're messing, uh, messing up. Uh, car to copy with, and this could take a int top speed and uh, a string color. This should probably be a factory. And then we could say, let's give me an error because I don't have the return yet. Uh, then we could say uh, return car like this. And then top speed, this dot top speed is going to be equal top speed not equals null top speed or it's not top speed mm. okay i'm not doing it very well because obviously i don't this should be more like this as you guys can tell i do not often do this at all normally i would uh just use my Freezed, generated, uh, copy with. Okay, it would look something. <laughs> it looks something like this. Not quite like this. Essentially, what my copy with uh, function is going to do is it's going to say if I passed in a value here, then use. I know what I'm missing. I'm supposed to have a car. Uh, previous car. Uh, what this would do is say if I pass in top speed use the value I passed in. If I, however, have not passed in a top speed, use the top speed from the previous value. And I can attach this to a class so that it uses the previous class. So I know I'm not making so much sense. I know I show that pretty badly. Uh, so let's instead show what it would look like when we're actually using it. It would look something like, let's say I already have a car, right? And this car could be whatever. Um, so car C equals, um, and by the way, this of course will not work because yeah, I haven't actually made that copy with function. 
um, top speed could be 14, 144 in fact, and the string could be red, right? But then when I say C dot copy with, I could then give it a top speed of 200. And now this is actually gonna return a new object. So I should actually say C2 equals, but I don't need to make a new object. I could also just leave it like this. It depends on what the situation is. Um, so now C2 is gonna have the new top speed, but it's gonna take anything else that we didn't override from the previous uh, previous thing. So this is one of the things it gives us. It also gives us a really nice map function. A uh, map is something I use quite often as well. Um, and what the map function from freeze is gonna do is it's gonna force us to go through every single, uh, every single instance of something. Uh, and all this will make more sense when we actually use it, don't worry about it. Um, and another thing it gives us is freeze unions, which is kind of like the, the enums. Uh, so think of when we do, for example, main axis alignment in a column. We can just type in, uh, if I have something like this, uh, font weight is a good example. When I want to select a font weight, I can just type in font weight and then hit dots. And then if my laptop was a bit faster, these different options would show up. I can select W600. I don't need to remember them by heart. Uh, on the other hand, you guys saw in the previous video in my states, when I was working with these, I kept forgetting what the name of this is. So would it be nice if these would be packaged together in an enum the same way that font weight or main axis alignment or cross axis alignment is? Uh, what if we could just say off check state dot initial? You know, wouldn't that be nice? So this is another thing that freeze unions give us. Um, and also a few other things that we have not mentioned. And yeah, so let's delete this because we made a complete mess. Let's pretend that doesn't happen. Uh, I, I swear I'm not that bad of a coder. Or maybe I am, who knows? Um, yeah, let's go back to this and let's look at how we should do it. So we need to install the freeze and freeze annotations. I'm trying to see. If they give us um, yeah, information here, when freeze annotations, we need build runner and we need freeze as dev dependencies. And then under the motivation, it will tell us a few more things that it gives us. Uh, but honestly, I told you some of them. <laughs> I told you the ones I use. So that's going to be fine. So we're going to go back to pubspec.yaml and for dev, de dev dependencies, we need freeze. In dev dependencies, we need build runner. Uh, this sometimes can cause problems if you have other packages installed. It's not uncommon to get um, conflicts with build runner. Uh, if you do have that issue, then just play around with the different versions. Uh, let's say if I had maybe block test has uh, conflicts, or at least they had, I don't know anymore. If I had a conflict there, I might change this to uh, 10 point to 1.9 or something like that. Just play around with the different versions until you find something which does not have a conflict. Okay, so those were our dev dependencies. I'm also gonna need one regular dependency which is freezed annotations. So you can see I have the latest freeze annotation here, freezed here, build runner here. Okay, that's fine. Just saving this stuff. I hope I haven't broken this. Okay, so we're gonna close all of this. And what we're gonna do now is create another block because I have my off check block, but now I want something which holds the password, which holds the the email address, something like that. And I can't even remember how I made it this project, so I might be doing this wrong, but never mind. So we're gonna to go to right click new block and let's call this one just auth. And that's going to create a folder called block, which I'm going to rename to be, apparently I deleted it. I wanted to rename it, but yeah, apparently I made a mistake. So block new block, let's call it auth. And right click, rename, auth. Call it auth block as well. That's fine. So 
I put it inside the off check block, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I could also put it just inside block. Maybe it is inside there already. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it for now. Okay. And these, this needs my VS code to, uh, to be restarted. One of my subscribers told me a nice shortcut to um, reload VS Code, but I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> so I'm just going to restart it instead. And thank you to whoever told me the shortcuts, and I'm sorry I forgot about it. Okay, so now when we go to states, we can, and you can see this has the freeze annotation already uh, because it's nicely integrated. So we have at freezed abstract class of states or whatever we want to call it with of states this should come automatically uh, if not you could type it out so it's going to be freezed abstract class and then the name of the class so i could make um, um i was using it in one of my previous projects so let me just look at what i was using I had something like filters. I can't see it right now. And then underscore dollar sign filters. So it's going to be whatever class you call it with an underscore and a dollar sign. And then const factory, the name of the class dot, and then what you want that enum thing to be. Uh, so first name. Then you could have an underscore. You don't need an underscore first name. And keep in mind, this is going to make another class, right? So because it's going to be another class, this name doesn't need to be unique. It can cause um, it can cause conflicts. I made this mistake previously. I had uh, ascending filters, and I also had descending filters, and I just use something like first name here, and then in my descending filters. I had abstract class with desk filters. You can also make a, um, a VS Code snippet, which I do have installed here, but I'm showing you how to do it by hand first. And then I had something like const factory uh, desk filters dot first name. I thought this might be okay because, you know, why not? And I had the same name. Anyway, what ended up happening when I did this was it didn't work, it crashed, right? And the reason that happened was because these two were the same. Um, and initially I thought that maybe because I'm using the different class name here, the different enum, then it should be fine. But I forgot that this is just an alias for this class name. This class name is why it actually is under the hood. So you can't do this. Okay. But anyway, I was just showing you. And I think maybe I don't have freeze installed. I don't know why it's still giving me errors. Did I not get this? Or maybe this had some kind of, yeah. See, this is what I mentioned before. Sometimes we can get different errors here. Uh, in this case, it says that uh, signing page depends on build runner 1.10, which requires 2.10 or higher, but here I had 2.7. So let's try changing this to 2.10 and see if that's okay. Sign page requires that's okay. The current version is 2.10 points. Oh, so let's just try this one. Dot beta because this is what it is anyway. Not still giving me an error. It requires version 2.9.0.930 dev. I don't really want to, <laughs> I don't really want to do that. Okay, so we're going to take this back to 2.10. I don't want to use the the dev SDK and instead I'm going to change my build runner to something like this and see if this will fix the conflict. No, let's try 
1.9. It really should be able to fix this for you by itself, but as you can see, mine is not doing it. I'll change this to 2.9. Sometimes that can be a little bit frustrating just trying to get the correct versions. Um, you can also just go on Google and try to find out which specific ones you need for which specific situation. But normally that's what I do, I just kind of guess. But yeah, this one worked. So 2.9 with Build Runner 1.9 has worked. Let me check what I had in my previous project. Uh, just give me a second. I have two different laptops, the, the Mac, which I use for work, and my own Linux system. Uh, so in the projects I was using there, which is a, a real project, uh, I have SDK 2.7 with Build Runner 1.10.0, and that did not cause a conflict. Okay, but this one has. All right, <laughs> whatever, I'm, I'm not gonna complain. All right, but now that we have this, I have gotten this, just gonna get it again. Now, I should find these. Now, this file off block dot freeze dot dot doesn't exist yet because it hasn't been generated, right? So let's finish what we were doing here. Um, so in the previous block example, I had the different classes for the different states, but now that I'm using a uh, freeze union. I do not want different classes. I only want a single class to represent everything. So what I'm going to do instead is say const factory of state and just leave like this. I'm actually not going to have the different versions. I will use it for the events. So you will still see that. Um, I shouldn't have this. This should be equal to uh, of state. And now I can have the different pieces of data which I need to follow in here. So I'm passing them to the state. So I could have a at required a string email address. That's required string password. Um, at required string confirmation. At required Bool show confirm or show confirmation. Mm, I think that's it. I could also have an at required string error messages or error message like that. And that's going to be fine for now. Then, of course, we need the semicolon here. Sorry, my fingers are not going so great because. Uh, this keyboard is a tiny bit different than my Mac, and I got used to typing on my Mac, mostly. Uh, then we can have a factory of state dot initial, and this is going to give us our initial values, and this would be email address. It's going to be empty because, of course, when we open the app, I don't want anything there. Password is going to be empty. Confirmation. Empty. Show confirmation is going to be false. Error message is going to be empty. So what this is saying is that when I say offstate or initial, this is going to return to me a new offstate object in which all of these values are empty and show confirmation is false. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is my initial state. So in the previous block, the way we did that was we created an entirely separate, entirely separate class. And I could have had data inside of here, right? Uh, but I wasn't using it in this particular case, so I did not do it. And the way I have it here instead is with the freeze union with the dot initial and I have these empty values here instead. So that's fine. I'm gonna close this. And now let's think about the different events that we're gonna need, right? And um, I'm gonna open this on the side so I can kind of be reminded of uh, these things. 
So the different events which we could have would be email changed. const factory of events. So this time it actually is a proper freeze union uh, because I'm going to have the difference functions here. Uh, password changed equals password changed const factory of events dot confirmation changed equals underscore confirmation changed of events dot uh, toggle show confirm. So what this is going to do is um, I think of when we have our sign in page, we're going to have some kind of by default, it's going to show email and password, but then it's going to be a button which is going to say a register instead. And when we hit that register, that's going to trigger toggle show confirm, which is going to turn show confirmation into true. And I'm going to have some kind of flag. So in that login page, I'll have if show confirm, then it's going to have um, email password confirmation as three different text fields. But on the other hand, if show confirm confirmation is false, it's just going to have the email and password. So this event is what's going to switch between having three different uh, text fields and having just two text fields. Okay, so toggle show confirm. Another really nice thing about these freeze unions is I'm never going to use these. I'm always going to use these ones. So as a result, if I were to spell this completely wrong, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. I don't work with that anyway, so that's fine. Um, okay, so almost there. Uh, const factory of event dot. Am I going to have login? I can't remember if I had my login in the previous one. Yeah. Okay, I'll have login. In fact, it should be uh, login pressed because I need to actually do the logic to check if it's correct. const factory of events dot registration pressed or triggered. I could use that word as well. Registration triggered. I'm pretty sure I spelled that wrong, but again, I don't have to care. const factory of event dot um, So the error message, I am going to change it, but the user is not going to have the ability to change it, right? This is something I'm going to trigger from my off block. It doesn't make sense to have an event doing this. So I'll get rid of that. Okay, I think that's it. We're probably going to remember more things in the future. So you can see all of these red things are because these things don't exist yet, but we're going to make them. So we're going to open up our terminal here. And there are two different commands we could use. We could either use build or watch. So it's going to be flutter pub run build underscore runner. And then we can either use build. If we use build, what this is going to do is just run this command one time. And when it's finished, it's going to stop. So right now it's going to look at it's going to look at all my files. It's going to see where I use the different annotations which have code generation, which in this project is just freezed, but you can have a few different ones as well. Um, and keep in mind, this has to be updated here. This has to be imported here. And for the parts, you might have to manually add this if you're doing it in a different file. It's going to be the exact name of the file off block in this case dot freezed for our freeze unions, but for different things like for hive, we use dot g and then dot dart, right? And our build runner is going to look for where we have different things like this, and then it's going to generate that code for us. So if we just give it a second, it's not there yet. It's just running. Sometimes this part can get blocks as well. Um, 
I forget the exact fix for it, especially when using Hive. I don't think it's happened with uh, Freezed, but yeah, uh, when we get a Hive, I will probably have to go over that. Okay, so now that that has finished, we can see we have a new file here, offblock.freezed, and we're not going to go over all of this. We're not going to go over pretty much any of it, because you can see it is a huge, huge file, right? And it says here, freeze generator, generated code, do not modify by hand, of course, because it used it for me. Um, oh, previously we didn't have unused elements, right? Uh, previously they didn't have this lint rule. It's really nice that they're doing it this time. Um, so for example, this gives us, as I mentioned, a copy with, and we're gonna find it in a lot of different places. It also gives us map, and a few different things. Okay, so this is really nice. It's gonna allow us to use that. Uh, now let's look at how we can actually use this. I'm gonna get rid of my terminal because I don't need it anymore. Oh, let me also show you the other command. I could also use flutter pub run build runner watch. And if you do this, you should really include this flag, delete conflicting outputs. What this is gonna say, is sometimes for different reasons, the build process can kind of get stuck halfway and those old files are gonna block the, the new, you know, building the new files and delete conflicting uh, outputs or whatever it was. Yeah, my fingers remember that command better than my uh, brain does. Uh, if you include that flag, it's gonna say, if there was something to have blocked you, delete those blocked files, those blocking files, so you can actually generate the new code. So you can see, when I use this watch command, this is still here. And the nice thing about that is that if I were to make a change, say I don't want to display the error messages here uh, and save it, then this is going to run for me and make those changes. And I could also put it back. So now you can see it's giving me an error because error message is not currently part of this because I made those changes. But now saving it, my watch is gonna automatically run and it's going to be that. Uh, I'm actually not going to use it because uh, my laptop's not the fastest and I'm doing a lot of things right now. Okay, so now that we have this, so let's look back at our block. We need to start with our initial value. So when our block first starts, what is it that we're passing in? Well, in this case, we're going to use this here. We're no longer using the separate class, we're using this, right? So this, uh, this is the same way how we use that uh, union thing. Okay. And now we're going to get rid of this. And keep in mind, now that we're inside the block, this is where we need to go over the different events and do things in response to our events. So I'm actually going to put my events on the side now so we can see that. And this is one of the nice things that, um, that Freeze gives us. I can say yield off event, I believe it's event dot map, right? And this map function comes from freeze. It's going to automatically give me all of these, one for each. The first thing I'm going to do is put semicolon at the end. Then I'm going to put comma here so I can format it. And I definitely forgot how to format on Linux. The code is different for uh, there we go. for Mac. And these days I normally use Mac. Now I can hit Control D to select all of these. And instead of uh, null, what I want to do is this. And it might not be an async. Let me double check. It's an async star. There we go. Um, okay. So what do we want to do in if we get an email changed? And I don't need this anymore. If I get an email changed, all I want to do is say yield states dot copy with. So state is coming from somewhere our block is passing our state to us so we can access the previous states. And now we're doing that copy with, 
that the uh, freeze library gave us. And we're going to say email address. And it's going to be e dot email. No, e dot value. Let's say email. Now, of course, this is going to give us an error because we haven't set it up to take a value. But this is a function, so we can, of course, give it all of these um, parameters. Password. This one's string confirmation. Uh, toggle show confirmation doesn't need anything because when we get the events, we're always going to do the same thing. We're always going to emit the opposite of what we have. So I don't need to pass in anything. Uh, similarly, login press doesn't need anything and re registration press doesn't need anything. And when you make any changes at all, you're going to have to run that, um, that build command again, if you don't have watch running. So flutter pub run build runner build delete conflicting outputs just in case this is why I don't like having my tech so big <laughs> I'm very quickly running out of screen real estate oh it's a yield no it's not here yeah. okay so the reason this is giving me an error is because this one needs to be yield star yield star means yield each Yield means pass just one of them. Yield star means like every time something comes in, pass in the new one as it comes in. So that's why everything was given an error. I'm using yield star before event.map and I'm using just yield in each individual one. Okay. And then password change is just going to be yield states dot copy with uh, and the password is going to be e dot password. Same with confirmation yield state dot copy with and confirmation or whatever I called it is going to be e dot confirmation like that uh, toggle shall confirm it's going to be yield state dot copy with and here we're going to say uh, show confirmation is not state dot show confirmation like that uh, login pressed I'll leave this for now okay we'll do this uh, afterwards I don't want to make the video too long or too complicated and same with registration press we'll go over this in the next video okay so what is going on here what have I done well I'm taking advantage of the map first of all and second of all of copy with um, when an event comes in my events can be any of these, right? So the first thing I'm doing is checking what type of events it is. Uh, Event.map, right? That's what it's doing. It's checking what kind of events. And then in response to each event, it can do something different. So if my events is email changed, then we're going to run this function. If my events is password changed, then we're going to run this function and so on and so forth. And if my events is email changed, then this is my event, which is going to hold all the data which we had here. So in the case of email changed, the only data it's going to hold is my string email. That's why here I can say e.email. This says get my, the email address which we got from the event, right? Okay, same with password. I take the state, the previous state, and I copy anything else that's already in it, but I override that email. Then I override the password. Then I override the confirmation. And the only thing which might look a little bit funky is this one. So to get the information from the event, I use e.confirmation, but of course I could have called this um, evt, for example. And if I call this evt, I would instead have to call this evt. So the name is coming from right here. Um, but yeah, in these cases, I was using the data from the event. But what if I want to use the data I had in the previous state? Well, in that case, I can use state dot variable name. So in the case of show confirmation, 
I'm not getting it from the events. I'm just saying, give me what was previously in the states, show confirmation, and then invert that. Give me the opposite of what that is, like this. Okay. Okay. So I know this might have been a little bit confusing. Uh, in the next video, we're going to hook this all up to my signing page, and we'll see how it how we can actually fire off these events and do different things in response to them. But in this video, what I want to show you guys is how to use the block together with this generated code. So the important things I want you guys to take away from this was first of all, pubsec.yaml, we need to go to, we need to install freeze annotations, freeze, build runner, and sometimes that build runner can have different conflicts with our SDK. So you might have to change the number on the SDK or the number on the build runner. Um, so yeah, and you can either try different things like I did, or if not, you can go on Stack Overflow, just go to Google and uh, see what other people say, see which versions work with what. Maybe, maybe they even say it here, but yeah, I'm not gonna read all of that. <laughs> so that's fine. Um, so that's how you actually guess it. Then we're gonna make a freeze union, which is gonna be abstract class, the name of the class with underscore dollar sign then the same name then over here the name of the class dot initial or whatever that's going to be the um, the different versions of the enum and then some unique has to be unique some kind of unique name here and then we can do that with the difference uh, whatever we have so like that then once you have this written out, you must use a terminal command. And we can either use flutter, pub, run, build runner. Now we can have the choice of build to run it once or watch to you know watch it. So to watch, watch all of our files for any changes. And I would really recommend using delete conflicting outputs flag as well. That can help you avoid errors. And then once you've done all of that, inside our um, block, we can yield star events. And now we have this map function, which is going to automatically fill this all in for us. And another really nice thing about this, which I haven't shown you guys, is what happens if we forget an event, right? If I deleted this, look what happens. Now this gives me an error. This says a parameter registration is required which is going to be really nice because it doesn't look how I want it to. It's going to be really nice because what happens in the future if I add another event, right? I already have all this uh, written, but then I realize, oh, um, what if I have, uh, forget, forgot password. Pressed, for example, right? And I add this as well. Well, giving me the error here is going to force me to remember not to forget it. It's going to force me to write that code so I can't forget about it, which is really nice. Um, and then finally, the last thing that this gave us was this copy with. So now I can look at my previous state and say dot copy with to, you know, not have to overwrite everything, not have to go through every single uh, thing and write it a second time. Okay, so we went over quite a lot, but as long as you remember those parts, then you guys will be perfectly fine. Uh, in the next video, we're going to actually hook this up to our signing page. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are as well. In the meantime, myself, Ovidius, I'm out. So take care, guys.